the common regret shared by most investors out there is that they all wish they started investing earlier. The biggest regret they have is that they waited too long to get started. They have less time to compound their money and it leads to frustration and regret down the road. So the biggest regret, like I just said, is not starting earlier enough because the sooner you start investing, the easier it is to grow your wealth for the future. The more time you have to invest, the longer the compounding period is. The more compounding period, the higher your money grows and grows and grows into the future. So as stated here, it says procrastination regrets three and four investors. Nearly one third said they wish they had started saving for retirement sooner. The earlier you start, the better. I know and understand you can't go back into the past and make up lost time. So if you haven't started, the best time to start is now. The common saying is the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The same thing works for investing. It's the exact same principle. The best time to start investing if you haven't already started is today. Don't fall into the trap of making the same mistake that is most highly regretted amongst all experienced investors where you say, I'll start saving for retirement. I'll start investing for financial future. I'll wait five years, 10 years. I'll start at 30, 35. What I'm going to show you today is that that biggest regret that say, I'll wait until next year and three years down the road, five years down the road, those sayings, those past, those mistakes can cost you not only thousands of dollars in the future, hundreds of thousands to potentially millions of dollars in compounding time and money down the line. So that is the biggest regret shared by most investors, three and four investors state that procrastination is their biggest regret. If they started earlier, if they had more time in the market, their portfolio, their money, their growth would have been substantially higher. So the best way to maximize your potential earnings, your the best way to not have this regret, to minimize this regret is to start as early as possible. So if you're 30, 40 years old and you haven't started yet, you have to start today. You have to sit down, you have to make a budget, you have to change your spending habits, and you have to be able to begin and decide today that you are going to make the decision to prioritize retirement, prioritize your financial independence, and start investing today. Because you can't go back in the past, you have to accept that what happened in the past, you have to move on from it, but you have to choose starting today to minimize this regret as much as possible. An early start harnesses the power of compound interest. Time is a powerful asset for investors thanks to compound interest. It is stated, I've said it before on this channel, that compound interest is known as the eighth wonder of the world. It's just a magical effect, which I'm sure you've everyone here knows about compound interest, but if you have not, if you don't know what it is or don't understand how it works, my previous video on this channel, just go back and look, I actually explained this and I gave better in-depth examples of the power of compound interest and what it can do for you. But in this video, I'm just going to share with you the biggest regret, which is not taking compound interest seriously, not using it as best as you can, using it to your biggest advantage and starting as early as possible. So compounding helps your money to grow as fast at a fast rate because you earn interest on your savings as well as an interest on the interest you've earned. The sooner you start investing, the more time your money has to grow and the less you need to contribute each paycheck to meet your retirement goals. That is a big key that I'm going to touch upon here. What I just said, if you start investing, just say at 20 or 25, you will have to put away each month from each paycheck. You have to contribute your to contribute to your portfolio much less each month than you would if you started at 30, 35 or 40. That is because you only have to put away less because you have more time for that money to grow and the interest and in capital gains and dividends, whatever you invest in, that money that your original investment earned is now earning you more money and more and more each and every year. So that extra time allows you to actually contribute less to your portfolio each and every month. So someone who starts investing at 25 will have to put less of money into their portfolio each month compared to someone who starts at 35 even though they're going to reach the same end goal at 60. So that's the power of compound interest. And starting early allows you to actually put in less of your own money into your portfolio and reap greater rewards down the road. So millionaires are really made, like it says here, in their 20s and 30s, not 50s and 60s. And that's a big misunderstanding within the world is that people think 
it does take time to grow your wealth. But people think all of a sudden when you turn 50 in your 50s and your 60s, that's where your wealth, be, you become the millionaire. That's how you generate your wealth in that time. But that's not actually the truth. That's not really how it works. What happens is in those age periods, yes, that is when you see your portfolio cross the million dollar mark, $2 million mark and so on. But the work to get there was really done in your 20s and 30s. Because the money that has the biggest effect on growing and is earning you the most in your 50s and 60s is the exact same money you put away and invested three decades earlier in your 20s. So let me give you a personal example of my portfolio. So my portfolio currently sits just around $35,000 and I'm 20 years old. So for me, I have a goal of retiring before 60 with a large amount of money in the in my portfolio as grown as, as high as possible but i'm not i'm not a serious investor i don't day trade i don't do anything crazy i'm a long-term investor so i hope to earn seven to eight percent a year on my investments which is the industry average which is the average for the market so for me i want my money to double every 10 years so i'm just put this in perspective for you starting at 20 i've actually done as much as i can to minimize this regret late moving on Personally, I don't even think I will regret this because I actually started investing at 19. So I'm not trying to brag that I started early. I'm just trying to give you a perspective on my situation. So my $35,000 portfolio, I am going to hold for four decades until I'm 60. That is four 10-year periods. So I expect my portfolio to double four times. So if I were to stop investing today at 20 years old, never contribute any amount of money to my portfolio ever again, just hold my same portfolio of my diversified ETFs and stocks for the long term, maybe make some minor adjustments along the way, but keep it invested without contributing any more money from any paycheck for the rest of my life. My $35,000 in the first doubling period will turn to 70,000. That 70 will turn to 140. That 140 will turn to 280,000. And on the final doubling period, that 280000 will double to $560,000. So currently at 20 years old, with a $35,000 portfolio, which may seem like nothing to some people, might seem like a lot to others, I'm currently, and that's how I view my portfolio, is that I'm holding a portfolio of $560,000 40 years down the line. So I've harnessed the power of compound interest incredibly, and I've been blessed and I've been lucky to have that. But I'm just trying to show you how powerful it is if you start early and try to minimize this regret. So again, if you're if you're not 20 years old and watching this, if you're 25, 30, 40, and so on, you may have to contribute a little bit more each and every month, but start today. Start as early as possible. Get that power of compound interest working for you and let your money grow without you working for it. So next, I'm just going to show you a chart that visually, I think it's a great chart, actually explains very nicely the power of compound interest. So this example here is someone who starts saving and investing $5,000 a year at age 25 compared to age 35. $5,000 a year, so just over 400 bucks a month, which may seem like a lot, and I'm not saying you have to start there on day one. You can start by saving 100 bucks a month, even if you can't do there. Start with 50 bucks a month, move up to 100, then 150, two on and so on. But for someone who starts $5,000 a year at age 25 will end up with more than double someone else who starts at 35 investing the same $5,000 per year. That's crazy to me. That 10 years leads to almost more than double what someone would have if they started 10 years later. This assumes a 8% rate of return without taking into consideration inflation. But again, this is just to give you a quick visual to show you the power of it. It's not an identical. It's not an exact science here. This example, but it's, it's enough to really show you that you have to start as early as possible. Like I said, I've said this numerous times already in this video, but I'm going to really make sure I drive this point home: is that I understand you can't go back into the past and change the past. You can't go back, make different decisions. You can't take back anything you've done, any money you've spent. But what you can do is you can change your future. You can change the life you're going to have later on down the road. And that small change has to happen today. And it's the idea where you're going to say, I'm going to have some delayed gratification. I'm going to put away some money now. I'm going to take away some things and some wants and some desires today in order to have a better life in the future, in order to create a better life for myself and my family down the road. 
So as you can see from this example, if you start at 25 years old, putting away $5,000 a year into a standard, this example doesn't have it, I'm going to say a standard S&P 500 index fund, a standard US total market index fund, or even a little um, diversified, you can have a little global portfolio that has just say some international stocks and some US stocks, Canadian stocks, whatever it may be. If you have a diversified portfolio that yields on average over over the 30 to 40 years, 7 to 8%, which is the market average. So you're not like you have to shoot for anything crazy. If history repeats itself and you just hold, buy and hold, invest each and every month or each and every year, you will potentially earn that 7 to 8% just by holding standard index funds. So for that, that's out of the way. What you have to do to get this is not complicated. Like I just said, many different index funds you can hold from. The biggest index fund in the world is the um, ticker symbol SPY, standard. that's the S&P 500 index fund. The exact same one held by Vanguard is VOO. The total market index fund is for the American stock market is VTI, again, another Vanguard fund. But just to show you how important it is to start investing, you can pick any one of those vehicles, contribute each and every month, and there's many completely free brokerages out there. Um, major, A lot of the big banks in the United States do not charge any fees to buy index funds or stocks anymore because the digital um, brokerages such as Robinhood and M1 Finance and Webull. So there's a lot of platforms out there for free that you can get started today. And again, you can do this within a non-registered account or a reg registered account like a Roth IRA, 401k, tax-free saving account. There's many, you can do this within any account. The point is $5,000 a year compared to starting at 25 compared to 35. And that's really what I want to drive home. You will have more than double your money if you start earlier. Again, this is not an exact science. Some may have to start at 26 compared to 32, whatever. The point I want to get across is look at these lines. Look at that green line. It is exponentially higher. And what I want to point out is Look at the growth. So if you don't understand what compound interest is, I still recommend checking out my previous video. But what I really want to point out is that compound interest works as a snowball effect. It works as it starts out slow. Over time, it gets bigger and bigger and your money grows exponentially. It doesn't grow in a linear pattern. A linear pattern would be a straight line that doesn't curve. It starts here and it goes, the same, goes up by the same rate each and every year. That's how investing works. How it works is investing is exponential. The compound interest grows exponentially over time. And what exponentially means is it starts slow. And that's what this bend is here. Over time, the growth per year shoots up. So let me give you an example. Year zero to year 10, you earned maybe $100,000 as you can see here. This, is, this line right here represents $250,000. So we're less than half. So in 10 years, we start at zero. We're at maybe a hundred thousand. Look at this next decade here. This, so a same 10 year period contributing the same 5% earning the same interest of 8%. Instead, we started at a hundred. Now we're at right here. We're at 250,000. So in this first 10 year period, we only earned a hundred thousand. Our portfolio investment only grew by a hundred thousand. The same 10 year period, the next time our portfolio grew by 150,000. Then if we go here, starting at 20, the third 10-year period, our portfolio goes from 250000 to just over 500000 So this, in the same 10-year period, same contributions, same investing each and every year, same interest rate, our portfolio has now grown 250000 in 10 years. And this last period is where the magic happens. And this is why I'm showing you the exponential growth of your investments. A 10-year period, same as before, same everything, same interest rate, same contributions, has now grown from maybe 550000 to $1.3 million. That's exponential growth right there, explained to you as easy as I can. Same 10-year periods, each providing the same interest rate or growth rate, starting at $100,000 in growth in the first one, $150,000 of growth in the second one, $250,000 worth of growth in the third 10-year period, up to over $500,000 worth of growth in the last 10 years. That is the power of compound interest. So exactly what I want to show you here is, if you started 
at zero at 35, which is what this graph shows. They start here instead of starting here. That's almost this is what the biggest misconception is, mis misunderstanding in the market is. As you can see, look, if I start at 35 compared to the guy who started at 25, at the same point in time, I'm just starting. He's been investing for 10 years. He doesn't have that much over me. He might have hundred thousand, like I said, I estimated just looking at the graph, but he doesn't have too much more. So I don't think I'm that far behind. But as you can see, over time, this is where the difference happens. This is where the the snowball effect works better for someone who starts at 25 instead of the guy who started at 35. As you can see, the gap between them starts growing and growing and growing over time. And once you hit that third third um, doubling period, the third 10-year period for the first and the second investor, the first investor blows them away. The gap is over, like I said, if you see here. This gap represents over $500,000 of difference between the two. So that's really what I want to stress is that you have to understand the exponential growth of compounding interest. If you don't understand compound interest, the common abbreviation, the common saying within the world of investing is those who do not understand compound interest, pay it. Those who understand how it works, earn it. Compound interest works on a credit card. So if you don't pay off your credit card, your money grows exponentially. The credit card actually charge you interest on the interest you haven't paid. So if this works the exact same way with debt and credit card debt and stuff like that. If you hold off paying off your credit card debt, it will only grow and grow over time. So what you just really have to understand is you have to learn about compound interest. There's unlimited videos on YouTube. I make them. There's many other great YouTubers who make solid videos on compound interest. You can learn so much for free. There's so much free knowledge out there. You just have to take the time to understand it and not make the biggest regret that most investors make. You want to really want to try to minimize your regret. You want to work, work towards something better in the future. And you really want to stay away and try to start today. Stay away from the average. Stay away from what society tells you. The market's risky, blah, blah, blah. I'm not trying to tell you. I don't know when there's a recession going to happen. I could make this video and then in a week a recession could happen or a recession may not happen for another two, three years. So which could affect the compounding period. But again, that's beyond the point. I just really want to stress to everyone the power of compound interest. Stop making the most important, the biggest regretted mistake that three and four investors say is they didn't start earlier enough. Make sure you start as early as possible, work towards your dreams and create a better life for yourself in the future. So that's it for this video. As always, I'm the Gen Z Investor. If you like the video, please subscribe and like. I post videos every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this is what I do. I talk about investing and personal finance. And I just share with you my personal portfolio and my knowledge on the stock market to give you tips and tricks on how to succeed long term. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.